Welcome back. So as I mentioned last time, I was going to replace these push rods that connect uh, the elevators themselves to the bell cranks. So you can see I've already replaced uh, this first one with the steel one there, the one that I painted black in the last go round, the last video. And so this is the one on the other side now. So how you replace these, basically you remove this bolt which is inside of the aileron there, pull that out and it allows the the rod end on the end of the push rod there to be released from the elevator and there's a couple of washers and stuff on there so I grabbed those as well actually four washers two on either side and so once it's released from the elevator same thing here you just um, unbolt it there from the bell crank and then it can slide out the back of the four plane and then I can replace it so here I'm just checking to see um, what the setup was there for the washers and it was basically two above and two below on um, either side of the rod end there. I don't know if you can really see that, but I just wanted to make sure that I'm you know, going to put it all back the same way as it was before. So there's two washers above and two below. So there's the new push rod, the black one, and then the old one is the aluminum one. So I just wanted to have this one out of steel um, just so you know it's not going to flex and there's... Uh, no chance of the rod end sort of pulling out of the thread or anything like that because uh, now that I'm counterweighting the whole thing from inside the fuselage there's probably more loads on there than we had before so this is just you know a little bit of a safety there so you can see I've put it back back in and the tape is there just holding the two washers together so I put a bit of tape on two washers and I can slide them in there and then when I'm done I can pull the tape out and so there you can see I've got two washers above and and two below uh, of, of the rod end there in between the arms of the bell crank and then so same thing here I tape my washers there to the end of the rod end and then carefully um, put it up there and slide it in the slot there on the elevator and then it's just a matter of um, just getting it lined up with the hole and then um, putting the bolt carefully in through the bolt hole there inside of the elevator and you know catching the washers and the right end and then the other washers so not too difficult and seeing that I've had practice doing this um, went fairly smoothy and I've got my um, my uh, um, tripod there for my camera actually acting as a support for the uh, elevator there so it doesn't move while I was trying to do that and that uh, came in handy it's nice so uh, got you know nice adjustment there for height so I can set it exactly where I want to hold that so it didn't take too much effort to get that sorted out and so there's that rod, rod replaced and uh, same on the other side and all I had to do uh, once I'd finished doing that was put the uh, washer and the nut on the bolt there um, for the bell crank which is what I'm doing here and then just tightening that up getting it nice and snug and just checking that the that the rod itself still moves so the rod end isn't binding on anything so uh, yeah that's all sorted out now and the rod end um, the rod still moves the way it's supposed to just sort of pivots on the rod end and uh, and we're done with that little job and the last thing to do is just check that the washers that were supposed to be there are all still there in place and didn't fall out um, in the process of um, putting the bolt through there so as you can see there I've got two washers above and two washers below the rod end and everything's nice and snug there there's no gaps between any of the washers or the, or the nut or anything like that and then likewise in here there's two washers either side so the next job is to reinstall the bell crank bracket there with the new arm on it for the counterweights and because of how everything sort of fits together in there you've got to kind of do it in a certain order so the first thing I needed to do is connect this um, right hand side push rod and put the bolt through there uh, through the um, the bell crank there because that ends up getting sort of mounted in between the um, the uh, spar there and also the supporting bracket in the front and so once it's in between there you can't put a bolt through that um, bell crank so I did that first and got all the washers and everything in there and then uh, you know put the nut on there and then the next thing to do is do the one for the vertical rod there the one that goes through for the connection into the cabin which is what I've got and then once those two are in place and all bolted up uh, then I can 
move that bracket here this is the supporting bracket and get that uh, in place and sort of lined up and um, put the bolt that goes through that hole there and then goes through those bushings so get that in place and actually it turns out it's better to um, not mount that bracket first because of the washers that need to be on either side of the bell crank uh, so there's just a couple of um, regular th uh, thick washers there on either side but uh, anyway I got all that in place and uh, what I'm doing here now is just tightening up the bolt there for the other push rod and this is the one that you can see down through that hole there and so there's a couple of washers on either side of that one as well and that's the push rod that goes out to the left hand side uh, elevator so I've got them all in place there and uh, you can see I've got the main bolt through there and I've put the bolts there for the um, bracket supporting bracket in place there and so this is with everything done now and you can see I've uh, safety wired that main bolt as well um, so that won't come undone and uh, everything's all good in the back the way it was and I got my counterweights on there as well and that's all bolted up and there's no um, sort of fore aft movement in there so it's nice and rigid that way and it just moves up and down the way it's supposed to so before we do the drop test let's have a look back how things were when I was um, got the nose off that time and you see when the nose comes down there the elevator um, bounces to almost a full down deflection and watch this again so the nose comes up and then I say okay nose down so I pull the elevator up and then when it hits the ground the elevator goes down again now I didn't do that um, it did it basically by itself so the goal here is to make sure that doesn't happen so here I'm lifting it up as much as I can and dropping it and unfortunately that nose strut actually acts like a really good shock absorber but this is similar to what happened uh, you know when I was doing that high-speed taxi test and you can see when I drop it now there's just absolutely no movement on the elevator at all so the counterweight is doing its job and also that uh, trim spring is helping out as well there to act as a damper but dropping it you can see it doesn't move at all so that's you know complete difference than how it was when I had it out on the runway that time as you saw so and just to double check things because you know obviously I couldn't see the camera when I was doing this um, I've got my uh, inclinometer there and if you look on there it's about uh, 18.3 degrees is that angle there prior to doing this and I'll lift it up and drop it again and we'll measure and see if it moved at all so and it weighs about 200 and something pounds there where I'm lifting it up on the nose so it's not too difficult to lift and you can see in the video it didn't move at all and it's still exactly 18.3 so the counterweight's doing its job and as I said with the um, the trim spring on there that's also helping out as a, a bit of a damper as well so I think it's much safer than what it was before because obviously it went down before um, when I had it on the, out on the runway anyway so that's that job done I'm happy with the solution for that um, and so they've, I've got a couple more jobs and stuff to do before the guys come out here uh, next month and you'll see me working through those but it's just I don't have a lot of things to do so it's just going to be a bit sort of light on with the videos uh, leading up to their visit um, Anyway, that's the update for the first half of this week. Thanks again for watching and tune in again on Saturday and see what I have for you.